So this is our CNC router, the ShopBot. This is a three-axis router, uh, typically used on wood. We have one at the shop uh, this size, and we also have a larger one that's uh, capable of cutting four by eight sheet of plywood. Uh, oftentimes it's used for flat pack furniture, uh, architectural models, that kind of thing. I personally love it for its ability to make jigs and molds. Yeah, this is uh, ultra high molecular density plastic. It's basically poor man's Teflon. Um, we were going to cut some aluminum in here, but it's a little stressful on the machine, so we decided to go with plastic. So we're just cutting out a card holder, basically, for your card business cards. The machine here is a 60-watt epilog engraver. It's capable of cutting through 3 8 inch wood, 3 8 inch acrylic. You can etch on a number of different materials, and uh, one of my favorites is glass and mirror. We have a rotary attachment, so you can put a pint glass in there and kind of rotate it along its circumference while the machine is doing its thing. And you can get some really nice images just from the internet or you can create your own on Adobe, Corel, AutoCAD, whatever, and send it over and get a customized shot glass. Uh, with one of these machines in, in your possession or at least with a tech shop nearby, you can go through Ikea and find any number of cool things to do. I have a whole catalog of interesting projects people have done on this. Uh, one of my favorites is somebody was in here just a few months ago at the tech shop uh, engraving a image of their own face onto a cheesecake. Why not, right? One or two things that I've done that's been really nice is I like to do chocolate from time to time. Uh, tortillas look great. The Virgin Mary and a cheese sandwich, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, at Halloween, somebody put a pumpkin in there. Um, typically, what, what I prefer to do, though, is uh, make project cases for my electronics work. I'm an electrical engineer, so a lot of what I do needs to fit in a nice little box, and I can customize it and put the name of the company I'm working for on it. And it looks really official, really pro. So it's a very capable machine. Um, I'd say the most often time you hear laser cutters with architectural models. You can import CAD layers and just straight up cut it out of cardboard or map board, stack them up together, and you have a really nice relief. Um, but at Tech Shop, you find that a lot of people who would make architectural models have access to this machine or prefer some of our other machines. So all four of them at Tech Shop San Francisco are booked solid with fun stuff, usually. Uh, projects all the way from like hand cranking uh, wooden gears to get like a Leonardo da Vinci contraption, like all the way down to the, the tortillas I was talking about earlier. So it's a, it's a wide range of things that people use it for. Um, it's pretty capable, 1200 DPI maximum on the resolution of uh, the etching. And I believe the encoder strip is set for 0 0.02 millimeters. So you can get a really nice closed loop control system so that it keeps its registration as it cuts through the entire piece. You can combine etches and cuts in the same job, which is important. If you etch and then cut, uh, it, everything turns out great, but if you had to do that in two jobs, you know, cutting first and then etching, your piece might move around as gravity or air takes its effect on it. Um, it's a CO2 powered laser, which creates a lot of heat, so sometimes certain materials don't really do very well in here. They melt, they bubble. Uh, for example, if you were to try to cut the chocolate with the laser, as cool as that might be, uh, it just bubble and kind of pop a little bit and not really give you great results. Uh, also, because of the heat generated, certain materials aren't good. ABS plastic and polycarbonate give off uh, toxic fumes. Uh, the acrylic, fortunately, in this closed indoor space does quite all right. Um, paper and things like that sometimes burst into flames. So there's a little bit of a, an art to getting your settings just right, your power and your speed. And with this machine, your power and your speed are your main two tools for deciding you know, how deep to cut, what to cut. And uh, fortunately, Epilogue's put out a great resource list online where you can go and check out which material you're using, uh, what thickness you want to cut and it'll match you up with the correct setting. So it's very user friendly. Another thing that adds to its user friendliness is the fact that it runs from a printer driver. So it's file print, as simple as that. There's no cam to learn like with the ShopBot that we just looked at. Uh, you'd have to take that CAD drawing, export it, import it into CAM software, and then create tool paths based on the geometry of your end mill, how fast you want to go, what you want to cut first. Here, everything is taken care of for you. You just file print and whatever the computer sees, it prints. You can drag and drop from a digital camera. You can uh, simply take an image from online and post it into the artboard and voila. So you don't really need a whole lot of creativity or, or moxie to just have some fun with it. But as you develop your skills, as you find the capabilities of this machine, uh, you can really take off with it and get creative and start using programs, CAD programs and uh, Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw to create new things. And uh, we've actually gotten some of those to show you if you want to see the trebuchets that they've developed over there. Uh, a lay person walking in off the street who knows nothing, how quickly can they go from zero to 60? That varies a lot based on a couple of things. If you have any experience with graphic design, you're done. 
right? It's file print. There's maybe a little bit of a learning curve with what materials to use for what type of jobs and which settings to use for what materials. That's a day, really, at the most. And as every time you bring a new material, you're gonna have to kind of adjust the way you cut it. But if you don't have any experience with uh, graphic design or CAD work, that's what's gonna take you a long time. The machine itself is like a printer, and almost everybody's familiar with that. So. When, when people come into the shop off the street with zero experience, no computer experience, that really depends on how much time you want to spend to learn that new computer language, you know, to learn how to draw a spline or to say, okay, well, what is a vector? What is a raster? What does hairline mean? And those, those are the things that I think slow people down, but I haven't really run into anybody who's completely turned off by it yet. We can walk people through it. Um, one of my favorite uh, tech shop members is a, a gentleman named Jackson. I believe Jackson is somewhere in the 85 to 90 region. And he cuts leather by hand to make all sorts of these wild brooches and, and just all sorts of artwork, but very finely cut leather. And we showed him how to use Corel Draw and the laser cutter. And so he comes in, he lays a whole sheet of leather down and cuts out this really complicated drawing that he spent hours on Corel Draw using. And um, I gotta say, he's certainly not from the technological era. You know, this is a new experience for him, it's a new language, but he is able to do beautiful artwork and increase his productivity by like a thousand times. So he previously had to trace things with an X-Acto knife by hand with graph paper. He's now just cutting on the laser and going back, you know, I think he, I think he's from um, either Mendocino or Marin County, going back up there and reassembling it. And it's, it's really a cool story because we get folks that are much younger than high 80s, low 90s, who's like, oh, uh, I don't want to learn how to do computers. You're like, oh, come on, if Jackson, if Jackson is able to do it at his age, and, and beautifully so, like, just an amazing technique, uh, better than I am actually, which is kind of cool. Uh, so that, that it's a, it's a really good story for me to to keep with me and, and remind me that yes, it is that easy, and anybody anybody with enough time perseverance can do it.